In this lesson, we're going to configure Exchange Server 2010 to accept incoming email. So just to recap what we've done so far uh, in this uh, lesson on configuring message transport, uh, message transport, we've looked at uh, the DNS and MX record requirements for um, configuring a new domain for your Exchange organization, and also mentioned that you will need to configure your firewall to allow the incoming SMTP ports uh, to be natted uh, to your or forwarded to your uh, exchange server. Also looked at configuring accepted domains for your organization uh, to configure the organization to allow mail that is addressed to that SMTP domain. And then we looked at the using email address policies to assign email addresses within that uh, namespace to the mailboxes within your organization. So we're getting pretty close to having Exchange configured to accept incoming email to that domain. And there's just one other thing that we need to do. So to demonstrate that, I'll just open up Internet Explorer and we'll go to a website that is known as the Exchange Remote Connectivity Analyzer. You can find that at Test Exchange Connectivity com. And this is the Microsoft uh, Remote Connectivity Analyzer. It's a tool that Microsoft themselves provides uh, for email administrators to perform various tests on their exchange organization from outside of the network. So you can perform tests that you normally would require, say, uh, a computer on its own internet connection outside of your firewall um, to, uh, to make the sort of connections that are needed for those tests. This tool just makes that a lot simpler um, and you don't need any special infrastructure for that. Now, one of the tests that we can do is an inbound SMTP email test. So I'll select that test and just click next to start that test. And within my organization, I've only got one valid email address at the moment, which is the administrator account. So that's administrator at exchangebootcamp.com. There's also this capture that you'll need to fill out for verification. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hopefully I get that right. And then just click here to perform the test. I got that verification code wrong. Okay, so the test is being performed and it just takes a few seconds uh, for the test to be completed. Now my connectivity test has failed. Now one of the good things about this tool is that when a test fails, it helps you diagnose exactly where that test has failed because you can drill down into the test steps that have actually been performed. So let's expand these test steps and we can see that the first thing that uh, the tool will try to do is retrieve the DNSMX records for the domain exchangebootcamp.com and it was successfully able to do that and it found my MX record of mail.exchangebootcamp.com with that preference of five. The next test uh, it tried to do uh, was test the mail exchange at mail.exchangebootcamp.com and that failed. So we'll drill into that one as well. So this uh, just breaks down that test a little bit further for us. Uh, the first thing it tried to do was attempt to resolve the host name mail.exchangebootcamp.com and it was able to do that and it returned my IP address um, that was configured in DNS. So that's fine. It then tested TCP port 25 on mail.exchangebootcamp.com to make sure that it's listening and open. So that would be um, testing that my firewall is accepting connections on that port and forwarding them to an SMTP server uh, within the network. And that was successful. And you can see that it made a connection to my X2010 server in the exchangebootcamp.local uh, domain. But the next test uh, attempting to send a test email to administrator at exchangebootcamp.com failed. So let's expand the details there. And the reason we get is that the server returned status code 530. The SMTP server requires a secure connection or the client was not authenticated. The server response was 5.7.1. Client was not authenticated. So why did we get that error? trying to send or trying to make an SMTP connection and send email uh, into the organization. 
Now the answer to that is that Exchange 2010 uh, hub transport servers are secured by default to not uh, accept non-authenticated SMTP sessions. So the hub transport server role is designed mainly for routing within an organization, which means it will mostly be talking to other Exchange servers within the organization. And Microsoft made available the Edge transport server role, which is designed to sit in a DMZ or an Edge network and accept those SMTP connections from the internet. But not everyone wants to run an Edge transport server. Uh, it just happens that the hub transport server is not configured by default to act appropriately for incoming SMTP or email traffic from the internet. But that is something that we can configure. So here in the Exchange Management Console, if we just drill down into the Server Configuration section and then into Hub Transport. So there is my Hub Transport Server, X2010 Server. Uh, once again, all these roles are configured on one server in this particular lab environment, but they could just as easily be separate servers. And within that Hub Transport Server, there are two Receive Connectors that have been configured. Now, receive connector is basically a, uh, a configuration on the hub transport server that uh, tells it how to accept or whether to accept communications on certain ports and under what conditions. So the one we want to look at is this default X2010 server receive connector. I'll just open the properties. And this is the one that is configured to listen on port 25. So this is the one that is configured to accept SMTP connections. So it's already configured to uh, accept SMTP connections on port 25, that's the port it's listening on, and it will receive mail from remote servers that have any IP address, so it, it covers the full possible range of IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, so it's not making any restrictions based on the IP address of the sender. And here in the authentication sections we've got some, uh, some preferences around what type of authentications it will uh, accept. But the important one in this scenario is this permissions groups. So at the moment, the only uh, senders who are allowed to connect to this receive connector are Exchange users, Exchange servers, or legacy Exchange servers. And all three of those are types of uh, are users or servers that will authenticate their SMTP connection. So a mail server that is just sending in from the internet uh, is not trying to authenticate and is being basically uh, looked at as a, an anonymous user. And that option here is not enabled. So if we want our hub transport server that is con uh, will be accepting inbound internet email to uh, stop presenting that error that we saw a few moments ago, all we have to do is tick this box to allow anonymous users and apply that change. Let's go back and run that test again. You can see that this time the connectivity test was successful. So if we drill down again, port 25 was found to be open, tempted to send the test email to administrator at exchangebootcamp.com and this time the test message was delivered successfully and importantly the next test that was performed it tested whether mail.exchangebootcamp.com was an open relay and the open relay test passed, the MX isn't an open relay. So a lot of people have a concern when they see this anonymous users tick box and they think that what they're doing is configuring, fig, configuring the exchange server to be an open relay, to accept anonymous mail from anywhere to anywhere, but that's not actually the case. All this option is doing is saying that anonymous servers out on the internet are able to send email only to recipients in this exchange organization without actually having to authenticate their SMTP connections first. That's all it's doing. So now that we've configured Exchange to accept incoming mail, in the next lesson what we're going to do is look at configuring Exchange to send outgoing mail.